Hey everybody, this is Catroll Hunter, and I did another trade with Nicole, and Canada Post did its best to ruin everything. We almost lost everything. Stay tuned. So here's the envelope I got from Nicole. She just put it in a regular envelope and this is how it came to me. Part of this envelope has been sheared right off and it came in this plastic bag, this plastic bag from Canada Post with an apology. We sincerely regret that your mail item is damaged. It was found in this condition in the mail stream. My goodness. So I've opened it up and there are pennies in here. That was my first question. Did somehow the pennies spill out? But I'll open it up, I'll show you what we've got in here, and hopefully we have everything that Nicole sent. So you can see a big chunk of this envelope has been ripped off. It must have got caught in some kind of a sorting machine or something. The letter inside is also missing part of the paper. It's ripped right off. And everything was in this other piece of paper, and the corner is gone, but the pennies are here, so... Nicole, you'll have to let me know if this is everything we were expecting. Probably is. I think we're going to be okay. I recently did a trade with Nicole and got stacks of old wheat scents. And I got a lot of feedback about my current system for holding and storing all of my scents in this binder with 2x2 two two flips. I heard you loud and clear. And I have got an upgrade. We've got a Whitman album, 1909 to 1995, that we're going to get these pennies in. It is brand new. It just arrived. Lots of spaces here, starting right up at top with the 1909 VDB, which we got, which is pretty incredible. So I think where I'll start is I'm going to first get that first tray, those first batch of pennies into the album, and then we'll look through these guys to see what additional spots we can fill with the new pennies that Nicole has sent and then I think we'll go over and take any existing scents that are in this album need to be transferred over and put them in the new Whitman one. All right I've got all those pennies from my first trade with Nicole into the Whitman album and I have to say it is a more fitting home for these pennies than I think just flipping them up and putting them in a binder. Let me know what you think. I actually really like this album. One of the things that I will say in observation I'll just flip to the first page so we can see there's that 1909 VDB. So we've got it started right from the first slot. But one thing that I'll say about this album is that it is, uh, these slots are very snug. So one of the problems with some of these albums that I find is that if you put the coins in and they're fairly loose in here, if you need to swap one out, you have to pull back the front slide and then you have to pull back the back slide so you can push it through. If they're not snug, all of the coins fall out and that's a real pain. And I've experienced that in other binders. I don't think that's gonna be the case here. Everything fit in really, really nicely. So it is a much better way, I think, to store these coins than some other alternatives. Now we've got lots of spots to fill in here, of course, but we've got a 1909, we got that 1915. We start to get a good run here in the late teens and early 20s. And then we get more spots filled out here, but it'll be fun to try and fill this up. I don't get a lot of US cents in my coin roll hunts. And not often the really old ones, but you never know what you're going to find when you're coin roll hunting. And I have found some older scents. I've got a few that I'm going to slot in here. And here we go into the 30s. we got lots of great coins here from Nicole. I say we take a look at what she just sent us. I know there's a 1926 Philadelphia in here. She mentioned that in her letter, so that's awesome. And I think some other things that I told her that I didn't have. So let's take a peek. I'll get them out of here and we'll sort them out. So I've got them all sorted out, and here is that 1926 Philadelphia. That's going to fill a slot in there. The rest of them are from the 40s and a few from the 50s that will all fill spots in this album. We'll take a look over here. We've got the 41 Denver and 41 San Francisco. There's a 42 San Francisco. We've got some really beautiful ones. This is a 46 Denver. And a 46 San Francisco. Lots of detail on those coins. They look fantastic. 48 Denver and San Francisco. And a 49 Denver and 49 San Francisco. Definitely harder for me to come across coins with mint marks in my area of the world. Then we've got a 1953. And I believe this one is also 
a San Francisco, there it is. And then a 1954 Philadelphia. So I'm going to get these all into the album, and I'm going to take a look and see what spots I can fill with the stuff I already had in my collection. Well, those Lincoln scents sure are looking great in there. One correction, I had said there was a 49D and an S. We already had the 49S from the first trade with Nicole. The other one was actually a 1950S that we put in this spot here, but we've got plenty of work to do to fill the rest of this album. I have a lot of these other scents in my own collection, so I can start filling them in here. And a lot of them aren't in great shape. I have some really nice ones, but mostly just circulated scents that I get here in Canada. It'd be really exciting to fill this album up and upgrade those spots. So these are all the wheat scents that were in my coin binder, all flipped up in these two by twos. The next step for me is to actually liberate them from their cardboard cases and get them into the album. These are all the wheat scents that were in there. I'm gonna start with these guys for now. I also have a stack here from my last coin roll hunt where I found a bunch of wheat scents. I'll have to see if any of these will upgrade, I don't know, or upgrade or fill spots. But all of these should fill spots because in my trade with Nicole, she only sent me the coins that I said I didn't have. So we should do really well in here. Most of these, as I mentioned, are circulated scents. I've gotten coin roll hunting here in Canada and where I've logged a date, you'll see it on the flip here. There are a couple of others though. I've got a few beautiful wheat scents. They're all in uncirculated condition. These guys are very dark toned, really, really cool. And I got these all from a trade from Greg, one of my subscribers. I did a video on that. I'll put a link up top here to that video and in the description if you wanna check that out. It was a massive, epic cross-border trade. It was really, really cool. And then the only truly brilliant uncirculated coins aside from those ones that I've got all of these came from original bank wrapped rolls from a purchase I made from Copper Coins. If you're not familiar with Copper Coins, I'll put a link to the video up here and in the description below where we went through this. Essentially, he purchases original bank wrapped rolls and then gives collectors an opportunity to buy into the roll and just get one or two or three examples. And particularly what they're looking for are varieties. Uh, repunched mint marks, double dyes, those sorts of things, anything really neat and cool. I've been fortunate to get some of those as well, but these are ones that didn't qualify for um, some kind of a different variety, but are beautiful coins. I'll probably be very careful when I'm putting them in the book because I don't want to mark them up. So I'm going to start cracking these out and getting them in here. And then once we're done, I'll give you a count of how many of the wheat scent spots I've filled and how many I have yet to go. So as we're going through this, I've just cracked out this 1929S that I got back in October in a coin roll hunt that I wanna add to this album. We got a spot for it right here, but I got it under the scope because it's got some gunk on it. Check this out. Pretty much obscuring the word liberty. So I figured before we put it in the album, what I'm gonna try to do is use some acetone, 100% acetone to remove that gunk before we get it in here. And I'm gonna be really, really careful because I've already wrecked my desk here. You can see the last time I did anything with acetone. If you didn't see that video, cleaning coins with 100% acetone, the results were fantastic, but I'm gonna put this penny down on here and I'm gonna use a uh, cotton swab, a Q-tip, to just dab that stuff off with the acetone and try not to get it all over the place. I don't wanna remove the finish from my desk again. I haven't even refinished it yet, but uh, we'll take a peek and see if I'm successful with that too. Wow, have a look at that. If you weren't convinced we would get good results, check that out. There's probably some bit of discoloration where that gunk was, it had sat on there for God knows how long but it completely removed all of that stuff and you can clearly read Liberty, that's incredible. Now I wasn't worried about destroying or wrecking this coin. It's an old circulated coin. It doesn't have a high value necessarily, but it certainly looked awful with all that gunk on it. So I've removed it. So 100% pure acetone, that's nail polish remover. You can get it at the drugstore. Don't buy stuff that has other ingredients and scents and other chemicals. 100% pure acetone should not damage your coin but we'll actually remove stuff like that. So um, 
Have a look at the video where I did that with some really old King George V scents. That was pretty cool too. So I am regularly asked why I don't wear gloves in my coin roll hunts. And the reason for that, of course, is because I'm dealing with dirty circulated coins. But just to prove that I have gloves and I care about the condition of coins, here's one of those 1943 steel scents that I got in a trade from Greg. This is just to show you that I can be careful when I am putting my coins away. So here is that 1943. We're going to get it in the album. Steel scent. I don't want to wreck it. There you go. In the album with gloves. Not going to wreck anything. There you have it. So everything is now in the book and we've got 96 of 142 slots filled. Lots of empty slots in the very early years. There's a lot of key dates in here for sure. But as we move along into the 20s, doing pretty well. And then, of course, into the 30s. Look at that. We've got most of the coins on this page. The last few rows for sure are completely done into the 40s. And then really just missing a handful in the late 40s and 50s. And one of these slots is for the 1955 double die obverse. I don't know if I'm going to get that coin roll hunting, but this album is looking pretty darn good. And a couple of the scents that were in this album... Uh, we've managed to fix up a little bit so they look better. Now that we can see both sides of the coin, we want to make sure that these are looking great. And I think that they are. Nicole, thank you so much for sending me some more pennies. I'm glad they all made it safely, despite Canada Post's best effort to destroy the envelope and spill everything out. The pennies got here, and that's awesome. So thanks so much for joining me on this little journey to uh, upgrade the home of my Lincoln scent collection. Primarily, I've got the wheat scents in here. I still have others, the later ones up until 95 to go through, but this is a pretty good start on the album. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, Catarol Hunter, please do that. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already hit the like button on the video, please do that too. I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time. The sponsors of today's video are Lighthouse Canada and the Charlton Press. Lighthouse Canada is the leading supplier of high quality numismatic supplies in Canada and the Charlton Press is the leading publisher of coin and paper money catalogs and price guides for Canadian collectors. Go check out their online stores today and use the exclusive discount code CRH20 for 20% off all your purchases.